Get it out of the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot to read. We see you have one job. Yeah. 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 should be added to the year for times. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our uh, Lahunta City Council meeting. I would like to now call this meeting to order of the Lahunta City Council. Today is April 1st, 2024. The time is now 6 p.m. If we could all rise for our invocation. Dear God, we gather today on this Monday after Easter with grateful hearts and minds renewed by the hope of resurrection. We welcome our new city attorney, Aaron Harris and we pray for wisdom and guidance as she begins her service to our community. As it is written in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. May this scripture remind us to approach our work with peace, compassion, and courage. May we strive to serve with humility, empathy, and kindness. We pray for the well-being of our city and its residents, and for the grace to work together for the common good. Welcome Erin and may our time together be productive and inspired by the hope and joy of our of this Easter season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you'll stay standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Mrs. Schofield. Ramirez? Present. Velasquez? Present. Stilker? Ayala? Here. Ochoa? Here. Ventoya? Here. Rico? I'm here. All right. Um, minutes of the previous meeting, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept uh, the minutes with one amendment. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Do you want to bring up your discussion? Yeah, uh, yeah. Just it's the 68th annual Otero Arts Festival, not the 6th annual. Uh, 62 years of art just uh, weren't reflected in the minutes. So just a correction, the 68th annual. 68 or 62nd? Um, I think 68. I looked it up right before I got here. It's the 68th. 68th. Okay. okay. Any other discussion? In the minutes it says 6th. That's why. Not last for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Citizen participation for non-agenda items only. There will be a five minute time limit per person. Please state your name and address for the record and you can, we'll start as soon as you sh step up to the mic. Brad, can you hit that mic up? Yep. My name is James J. Horner. I live at 308 East 10th Street. Uh, I'm here to finish the job. Uh, this is an update on the dances for the Senior Center. Uh, you'll see on there, we'll start our day dances this Friday from 2 to 5. The day dances are for the elderly that can't make it out at night, might be afraid to come out at night or something. We want everybody to be involved. So they can come in the afternoon, bring a dish, share it, the music's free for this going to be, uh, uh, what do you call it, Bluetooth variety. So the music will be free. And the Friday after, which is the 12th, will be our first evening dance. New venue of music for Senior Center. You'll read all that on there. And we'd like to invite the City Council to come uh, so you can see what we've accomplished. Any questions? No, thank you. Sounds fun. Thank you, Jujun. Um, thank you. I'd just like to add, I did bring uh, membership applications for the Senior Center, if anyone else would like to come. Um, I will be there Friday. As of tomorrow, I will be eligible to go to Senior Center dances. So, um, JJ has already asked for a dance. Uh, I... The Senior Center, most people think uh, senior citizens are 55 and older. Uh, that's for discounts. Uh, 
Your senior center is 50 and older. Good news. Yeah. Good news. Thanks. You don't yeah. get discount. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no discount. But I get to go to dance. Have a good evening. Right. Thank, Thank you, JJ. Anyone else for citizen participation? Going once, going twice. All right. Moving on. Uh, city manager search. Uh, this is an unfinished business. We have a form that we are working on to turn over to SGR. We're very close to being done. Uh, I did talk to Larry Gilley, who is our contact for SGR. Uh, as soon as we turn that form in, uh, he will give us some brochure type uh, material that will be uh, available to the public. Uh, it will be posted out there. We will also have um, a survey of sort, probably online, uh, which Maureen will also help with um, getting it put up with maybe Mel or someone to, to get that accessible to the public. Um, and then we will begin this fun process of finding a, a new city manager. Not that we don't enjoy everything you're doing for us right now. Right? I should have that all completed by Wednesday. Um, I, I informed Larry that we just have a couple more things yeah. that we need to tie up. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, my late work. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, as soon as we know more, I will keep everyone informed and we will keep this uh, as uh, informative on this search as we can. Um, but right now, we just don't know too much more yet until we finish some stuff up and then we'll have a, a better update for you. Um, new business. And this says mayor action, but we now have a city attorney, um, which I am so happy that we do. Um, I, I want to say welcome to um, Mrs. Aaron Harris. Uh, I want to say thank you for stepping up and and um, coming into this role for us. Um, I do want to thank the previous city attorney for all of his time and efforts uh, on the behalf of our city to make it a, a great and wonderful city to live in, uh, but we do look forward to this new era with, with Mrs. Harrison. The floor is now yours, ma'am. Thanks. I appreciate the welcome, and in the words of Philip Meloff, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> 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 so it looks like we need to start these liquor licenses, is that right, and I lead it? Yes. Looks like our first is an application for special events permit by the Otero Museum Association. All in that the property has been posted, all the fees have been paid, and so we would recommend approval. You made that sound way better than I did. That's great. All right, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. All right, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I'll, yeah. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Mrs. Harris. Second is an application for special events permit by Southeast Co Southeastern Colorado Creative Partnership. Nancy Asherman is the event manager. Again, the property has been po properly posted. The fees have been paid, so I would recommend approval. All right, do I have a motion on that? I'll make a motion. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. <laughs> I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Finally, then we have an application for a renewal of a tavern license by Red Dog Revisited LLC. That's not a special event. It doesn't have to be posted. The fees have been paid. I would recommend approval after, upon my review, I would recommend approval. All right, do I have a motion? Motion to approve. I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? I will be Aye. abstaining due to the relationship to this establishment. <laughs> Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> just, just Are you ready? Oh. Okay. Um, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes uh, six to zero with one abstention. Okay. Um, this next one uh, was on behalf of the utility board. And I do see the utility board chairman in the audience. So, Gary, if you wouldn't mind coming up and uh, explaining this to council for us. <clears throat> See what happens when you show up. Was it late enough? <laughs> so, as you may or may not know, we, the utility board, has been more than a year in struggling with uh, the city's commitment to the Arkansas Valley conduit 
it's a tremendous project to bring clean cleaner than pumped well water water from essentially the reservoir pueblo through a pipeline to uh, cities down the valley all the way to lamar and eads and i don't remember holly's in there i think it is but it's it's a A tremendous project has been in the works for I don't know 30 40 years I, I forgot when the 60s I think they started it since Kennedy yeah, that's yeah. The, and the frying pan Arkansas project was the kickoff and we're concerned uh, that we may be over committed as far as estimates were made of what we would need to consume uh, and so we, we've been wanting to have a knowledgeable skilled person review our commitments to participate and see if if there's some way we can adjust that because we're the city has sort of committed right now to uh, a lot more per capita of the water to be used and therefore the cost of the water than other cities of our are of like size which is Lamar basically <clears throat> where we're committed for about twice as much water. So we're gonna, if we don't need that much water, we wanna make sure we don't have to end up paying for what we can't use. The fact that we built an RO plant to take care of our issues with water quality in the past means we could uh, essentially purify all of our water without needing the conduit water, but uh, one is a major participant in the project so if we drop out I don't think we can because we're committed but that would that would make major changes in the whole project so we we wanted to, to get a review uh, and we we're just an advisory board in that regard so we want to pass that on to the council to to do that and I don't know where that stands as far as so let me just kind of summarize what happened before Paul and Gary you you know correct me if I'm wrong here so last year uh, the utility board made a recommendation to council to say no to the Arkansas Valley conduit based on the information that we had at that time since then we really haven't got any new information from them however the utility board would like to further try and find out more answers for us but they would need us to kick it back to them um, in order to start their mission again. So kind of like you're saying, we're not saying no anymore, we wanna find out more answers for you. And then they would make another recommendation based off of what you find out and if we kick it back to you, and then we'll go from there. Um, they would still not have final say so and anything that still come before council. They just want the opportunity to find more answers um, because we haven't been able to get anything really from the, the Southeast Water Conservancy District or the conduit people. Uh, you know, I think we've had one meeting in over a year and you know, that, that's, that's really tough to make uh, a decision on, uh, which is why council still hasn't made a decision because we still don't have final numbers. We get told different things every time we talk to them. Different communities get told different things every time they talk to them. You know, we're, we're told that it, don't worry about that price because it might not be that price, but they won't tell us what the price will be. And everyone is really concerned about rates right now, so we can't um, say yes or no until we know what that rate's going to be. Does that sound correct? Yes. Yeah. A major concern is our our initial back of the envelope calculation look like if our commitment remains what we set forth one of the 20 years ago. Or so with our Joe Kelly. Uh, requested our allotment we would essentially double our water rates and that's you know they're bad enough like it is so we, we just need to make sure we can whatever however we can fix that so it's better for us we need to make sure we pursue that instead of just letting the train go down the track and we're on it and right. have no say I don't, I don't know whose math is more correct but i thought we were close to tripling it off of that math that, that we could be yeah and is there a way to negotiate that initial price down or that initial allotment down? That's what we want to find out if we actually need that amount of water. Right. No one's right. been able to give us a commitment to whether we're or that guess however long ago it was is set in stone. 
whether we can re request a change to that where the water we get we can sell somewhere else so we don't have to really pay for it even though we have to take it i mean we need a good aggressive water lawyer i'll say whatever that might be who is who's trying to solve our problem to push the right doors to get in to say we don't want to make this deal final whatever so go ahead maureen well yeah my question is are you are you asking do you need help to hire a water attorney and it sounds like we definitely need an expert uh is that something the city will have to help pay for you you have to if i understand it right the utility board does not the only authority utility board has is to set the rates okay you guys approve the rates we recommend or you don't approve them then we have to do something but that's the only authorities we have we've made recommendations to you so we've recommended a long time ago that we pursue every method for finding out if we can what our commitments are what we can change negotiate whatever am i stating that yes yeah pretty much accurately so it sounds like you are asking for permission to hire an expert we're hoping that somebody in administration or on the staff has has found i thought we the last meeting they said there was somebody who was going to address yeah, mike weber and um who's their company called is there a thing? Well, but that was just one issue that they were going to look into <laughs> they have a variety of issues they want us to they want to factor yeah. they say they and it's me it's weird i don't know <laughs> <everything>. <laughs> but, but we need to get a person to pursue this issue aggressively because the closer we get to signing on the dotted line the, the less opportunity we have to make adjustments i would presume so what is the so, timeline then when they're asking us to sign something or we don't even know that it's it's being built somewhere up there um by avondale i think are they yeah it's, they're, it's not, they're not even to the depot yet so so okay. if, but it's part of us in progress um we don't know if, if if we're our guess is a commitment that we can't change so we just need somebody to sit down with whoever. another big piece of this puzzle is when the utility board made their recommendation that we do not partake in the conduit we got a letter from the the district saying that if we did not partake in it that they would take our project water and that's been a topic of discussion is can they do that because if they can do that then we have no choice yeah. like you know what is our what are our options at that yeah, point? That's, so that's something else that they want to look into right so the project is a frying pan arkansas project which we have allocations of that water which comes from way up in the mountains through tunnels and all kinds of infrastructure <coughs> that I, i've learned more about water than i ever thought i'd know you'll never learn it all I'll tell you. <laughs> so joe it's, what, it's, what do we need to do so we would need a motion to to kick this back to utility board for the sake of we have to be authorized the research to, of it yeah. to then i would say if somebody. you do need a lawyer after you just get a little bit more then you bring that back yes. to council that would be what i would suggest but i can't make motions and i can't do anything like that but so and i don't it's, this is all sort of nebulous but we need to focus on something so we can have a concrete contact person pursuing it aggressively who doesn't have to go out and dig holes in this in the street and whatever other part-time and, and you're going to have a new city attorney at your next utility board meeting too uh -huh. so that that could maybe put you in the right direction as well too uh oh <laughs> we used to be friends Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> no change yeah. you're, you'll you'll handle it i'm sure anyway so i guess i we just need to have a an authorization to pursue this maybe have we, we haven't suggested a budget amount to do that for but we need to get something started and i don't i, I, I think if we kick it to you and then you guys get that first back to the board meeting the board. and see what you actually need or maybe where we can start and then come back with a number and we can approve that but at least we can let you start on okay. your search all right we have a meeting here in two weeks so i would entertain a motion i'll make a motion for the utility board to go back and revisit everything that needs to be the issues that you want to address and then uh, look at your budget to see what set amount we would need to look at okay. and then bring that back to council. Okay. Yeah, so 
a motion. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, I'll ask for your vote. And that passes unanimously. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Uh, committee and board reports. Any committee and board reports? No, I attended the utility board uh, meeting last week and the board approved an additional $11,000 be appropriated to the electric fund. Also approved a wastewater rate increase from $55 to $58.50 uh, to be effective May 1st. I think it's already been posted and I think some notification has gone out on Facebook. And I don't know if they went out with this month's or upcoming month's bills coming up. Uh, level one water restrictions, which basically means no water, no water in between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. <coughs> and no uh, at-home car washes. And I'm not talking about anything commercial, just washing your car in your driveway, avoid uh, excessive water use. Some copper wire was stolen from the 600 block of Bellevue. Guess we're lucky that nobody died doing that, but that's a shame that that happens in our city. And on the east side of town in dumpsters, they're finding human waste when they go to clean them out. Just so you know, if your dumpster did not get picked up, our sanitation department will not pick up a dumpster if there's human waste in it, because uh, it's, it's toxic and it's, it's a biohazard. And it then falls on the owner of that or the renter of that dumpster to take care of that matter. And I'm sure they don't want their employees or their, them doing it. So I think the solution would be, and it was brought up by Commissioner Bird, that there'd be a shared lock, master lock, and the city would have a key, and the renter or leasee of that dumpster would have a key to prevent that from happening. And that was the utility board. Uh, I have to add an addendum. That's, a, that's what that is, the utility board. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Miss Ellen Back has donated a new flower box to the Senior Center as part of her Eagle Scout pro uh, project, and her family donated the materials. So I forgot to add that to the last Senior Center uh, report. So thank you. I, I just asked you too, Paul. Um, you know, we've been talking about those rate increases since we got that report from Jay Cable. Was it in? March, April of last year, or we we started negotiations with them to do that yeah. thing for us. And every utility board meeting that is posted online has we've talked about those rate increases and that they were going to be rolling out um, for the next three years as soon as we started that. Um, it's not something that's fun. It's not something that we're doing just for fun. Uh, we look at those very hard, and we need those rate increases to uh, keep those departments going. Uh, so when people say things like, oh, we're, we're trying to uh, do all these different things with taxes, and we've said over and over again that there is the general fund, then there's enterprises fund, and the 1% the had nothing to do with the wastewater tax, uh, with the wastewater rate increase. Those are two separate things, okay? Um, everything that happened with the trash trucks as well, too, um, that money was put aside for that. Uh, we, we already were, were prepared for that, so that has nothing to do with that rate increase as well either. Uh, so I just want to be very clear that, you know, uh, when, when you see stuff like that happen, there's transparency, there's meetings that you can go back and watch and see when all these decisions were being talked about. Me and Paul will sit up here in these utility board meetings and there's maybe one person out there sometimes. Uh, but those are available even if you're not here, you can come back and, and watch them at a later time if you're busy. But um, We've been talking about that for a while. It's not something that we wanted to do, but it's something that had to be done. Since I'm the chairman, I will elaborate if I have three minutes. So just so people know, each of these funds, they're called enterprises. They run as a business completely independent of the city. The general fund is what the city council gets to spend, and it's, its income is from taxes basically, uh, property tax is a small part of it, sales tax is a large part of it, and that 1% increase goes to the general fund, which funds our uh, youth programs, all the other things we talked about during that, that drive to approve that. The enterprise funds are like a business. The city council has nothing to do with them except approving the rates and approving the budgets. Um, 
So Electric Fund has a, has a budget. It has to charge so much for its power and for the facilities, the poles and the transformers and the wires that go to the point of service. That Electric Fund has to break even or make a little money to keep in business. Water Fund, same way. Sanitation, same way. Um, what else? Did I water, as I said, water. Wastewater. 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 Wastewater, yeah. <clears throat> So each of those is a separate business, run as a separate business, it has a profit and loss statement, and it's completely independent. The utilities do not pay the city, the city does not make money from the utilities from its, their profit or loss, except for the city charges the electric department a fee for each pole in the city, it's called a franchise fee. The cable company that pays the city a little bit for each attachment that they have in the city. So that's income for the general fund. And, and otherwise, the utilities, including cable and the utility, which the city contracts out to Clean Valley Recycling for recycling pickup, we pay them. Uh, Clean Valley pays the city 50 cents a month for doing the billing for Clean Valley. But that money then gets paid, 650 gets paid to Clean Valley to do the pickup and all that. So there, just to be clear, there's a whole bunch of different businesses all running under kind of one thing here, but each one is, is really a business. The council runs the general fund, and they, they all have to make, have to break even ultimately to stay in business as to do the enterprises. So does that, That's perfect. Does that help perfect. anybody make sure there's no confusion? Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Gary. All right. Um, City manager's comments. Well, it's been a month. Here we are. Mm -hmm. Everything's going good. Um, Gary, thank you for kind of clarifying that. And I just want to clarify one thing, kind of tagging on to that. Uh, there might have been some misunderstanding on how I stated the 1% tax increase in the usage um, out there for maybe some different projects. And again, the 1% sales tax goes into the general fund. And the reason we did get that passed was good publication and stuff, but that will help build the budget, the general fund up for further projects down the road. It's not it's not a quick fix, but it's, a, it's to start building it up so we can start uh, making projects down the road to work on. So if there's, I hope that clarifies of where that money goes, does not go to the general or to the enterprise funds. So I wanted to clear that up. Uh, next, it was brought to my attention that Boy, this weekend, uh, Brick and Tile Park was used a lot by a lot of people, and we had some parking concerns over around there. Um, so I met with uh, Brock Kinkhouse and Martin Montoya today to start looking at adding some parking area just uh, west of the bathroom area, where they were going to put a parking area, I believe, but it wasn't completely talked about or completed. Um, they did have some cars park back behind the bathrooms, right next to the bridge. Um, so we are gonna get some um, ideas brought up to get that fixed, such as maybe putting a split rail fence, maybe some boulders that are already on order, um, and we still have some grant funding left over to pay for that. So it's not gonna come out of any other fund, which is good. Um, so we're talking about putting about, uh, or making some area accessible with road base so the cars can park maybe out of the mud and stuff. So I'll keep everybody up to date on that, but it just seems like they're needing some more parking. And we know over there off in Nevada, it's kind of smaller parking, but anything we can do to help people out so they can enjoy the park. That's what we want to do. Uh, soccer signups are going good. According to Parks and Recreation, they have 225 kids currently signed up. That's only 15 kids less than we did last year. But there are always some late signups so we're good there and baseball started signups today back to their reduced fees like Brock and them promised was going to take place so that's a plus so maybe we'll get our numbers back up there uh as everybody aware we had that big that fire underneath the third street and adams bridge we did get that cleaned up thank you to the uh, police department and the street department for taking care of that we did remove two of the very large dump truck loads out of there um, I don't have a number of how much it cost us yet, because again, we have to pay that to the to the landfill, but it did take, uh, there was four guys underneath there working for, I don't know, there was three hours, three and a half hours, I think, 
uh, dump truck, front end loader, things like that. So we had to use some of our own resources to take care of it, but it does look a lot better underneath there. So hopefully uh, police department can be doing some extra patrol and we can maybe help keep that cleaned up and stay clean. You're welcome. Uh, from the police department, next Wednesday, April 10th, uh, Chief Todd Quick and Sheriff Sean Mobley are going to be doing a uh, grab a cup of coffee with them and chat with them down at the Copper Kitchen starting at 8 a.m. So that's next Wednesday the 10th. And then just an update from the Water Department. Uh, I hope everybody saw that the public notice went out today on Facebook in reference to the large water break that they had last week. Uh, April 2nd tomorrow they're going to start repairing that. They got the parts in and everything. So during that time, to start tomorrow, one, the RO plant will be shut down because they have to shut the water down to that. But there is plenty of water in storage that we're going to be using. They are not going to have to shut the water completely off to that surrounding area unless they absolutely have to. So they'll be able to work on that repair. What they are asking that the public limit the unnecessary water use, such as outside watering, uh, car washes and stuff during this time, so we can keep the usage back up for reserve. Um, that also goes for fire hydrants and things like that. We are, I already have a plan in place. In case something happens, we will only use fire hydrants in that area in a big, big emergency. So that just kind of, we're going to do our part. We're asking that the public uh, helps us out there. They're hopefully going to have it sometime tomorrow done, late in the afternoon. They will be doing updates on the Facebook page, uh, City of Lahana Public Notices as this process takes in place tomorrow. So if they have to shut water down, they'll put a notice out. If not, um, they're gonna keep it clean. Uh, so they're hoping to jump on that. With that, if you notice any discoloration in your water after this is taken care of, just remember, flush the cold water lines in your house or your business, starting at the uh, lowest part, working to the tallest part, and again, Make sure you flush all your lines and anything that uses water, such as uh, sinks, toilets, washing machine, showers, things like that. Flush all your lines until the water's clean. But it is safe. Our drinking water is absolutely safe. We meet all the requirements and everything's good there. So uh, my hat's off to them. Uh, in the water department, they put in a ton of extra hours, not only with the water break, but also getting the uh, SCADA system updated. Um, they worked numerous hours of overtime with some of the couple of them working 30 hours straight to make sure that one, the RO plant stayed online and everything got updated and, and in place. So uh, my hat's off to all of them that took all that extra time. Other than that, everything else seems to be working good. That's the end of my report. Any questions for Brad? Easy. Thanks. I do have one um, question. Yeah. With the... Um, a lot of the concentration at a brick and tile still. There was a, um, a comment about Tippy Martinez playground, mm -hmm. that it's looking a little um, bad and, and maybe okay. not um, useful for people. Is there any updates on maybe when we are gonna jump over there and- I'll get with Brock as soon as, as soon as we can get a plan, I'll get everything out. Um, I know they were not trying to put anything behind, but uh, with baseball season starting and stuff, but we will make sure that we take a look at it and I'll let everybody know. Thank you, Brad. You bet. Appreciate you. Thanks. Any other questions for Brad? A uh, question. We had talked about having a crime town hall in April. Is that still in the plans? I don't know if we're going to do crime or just a, a general town hall okay. um, where you can talk about crime or whatever else is, is in uh, your mind at that oh, time. Yeah. Um, so I haven't decided which it's going to be yet. Um, there's just so many issues coming up at once, it feels like. But mm -hmm. we will have some sort of town hall probably towards the end of April. So late April? Mm -hmm. Okay. And about the cause of that fire? From the bridge? Uh, it was a homeless camp. And uh, appeared to be that uh, sometime in the afternoon there had been some cooking going on. Um, I did find uh, the evidence left over of a homemade type campfire underneath and uh, some food and stuff there and it looked like it caught uh, if you think of uh, of a lot of debris underneath there there was tarps there was uh, parts of sofas there was some mattresses there was there was a little bit of everything underneath there the person that had been staying in that area has done a lot of uh, gathering of items from around town so 
Um, we also did find some things that I did make sure that the city workers took care of. We did find some needles down there and some other um, items that were concerned. So they made sure they had uh, steel toe boots on, they used gloves, things like that, made sure they took care of each other while they were doing it. But that was the cause of the fire, it was a, a, a campfire. Thank you. And in other relation to that kind of thing, you talk about gathering of items around the city. Um, there's been people that have noticed, you know, influx of shopping carts in mm -hmm. random places where there's no stores. So I don't know if that's something that city been looking at to help, you know, relocate to, those. Yeah, to the best of my knowledge, as the code enforcement in, is out doing their stuff, they've been trying to gather and get back to the places that they're supposed to, at least, or at least let them know. But I'll make sure that's followed up on as well. Yeah. Specifically around the Otero Museum. Yes, I think I <laughs> drove by there the other day, and I thank you. We'll get that taken care of. Now, with it being at o the Otero Museum and it being so close to Safeway, would that still fall on code enforcement to do, or should Safeway be maybe doing a parameter check? Probably wouldn't hurt for them as well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll talk with Chief Quick and uh, see if we can get some education out there to the businesses that if they are missing some, Maybe they need to go out and take a look too or help us out. We only have so many guys that can get out and do it and take care of it. So if they could help us out, that would be great too. So I'll make a I'll make a push on that this week. A lot of things I noticed they didn't want to go down into the arroyo, so they just leave them on top yeah. of the hill. Yeah. yeah, thank you for taking care of those. Those have been there a bit. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, I walked the Brick and Child Trail on Thursday and noticed a few. Yeah. Uh, shopping carts down there? Yeah. Along the trail. Along the trail. Okay. A little too far for me to push back. <laughs> and, and I don't think it was just this weekend with Brick and Tom. I mean, every weekend is busy. It seems like I see and, Paul over there all the time. It's just, yeah. you know, it's uh, any day that the weather's been good, it's been yeah. busy. It's been great. It's been a great addition to the city. So um, I appreciate these guys wanting to make it better parking for everybody and make it accessible for everybody as well. And there's actually, a, when I went, there was a car that had drove off the little side of the road there off yeah. of 8th Street. Um, so the the neighbors said there used to be like a railroad tie there at one point with a whole bunch of uh, reflectors. Oh, but they okay. don't know when it got taken out. Yeah, so. they do have the fence all the way up over there with the gates and everything. So uh, we do have access for first first responders. You know, something happens over there, but they did get the fence completed and it looks really nice over there. It's a great park. We're gonna have to start putting time in the drive. Take it, take it. Um, and then do you just want to clarify real quick about the dog park because there was a lot of confusion on that Brad if you yeah mind. so the dog park um, like it was stated it is in the master plan the master plan is available to look at by anybody in the parks and recreation department meeting with the director um, it is not uh, it's it's not a off the project but it's a, it's a low priority on their rankings so um, when they did the master plan it's not it's not an item that wasn't on there just a, a very low priority and the funding again, you know, we didn't talk about grants or anything, but we are talking about how how the, how it could be used and maybe feasible down the road. So nothing nothing overnight. So it would be a low priority. Yeah. Now is everything on the master plan year over year when they come out? Is every item ever completed? Every wish list? I would like granted? to say yeah, I would like to say yes, but I don't think so. So I don't. At some it depends of them, on funding, funding right. and, and and priority. And because yeah. just like with Brick and Tile Park, didn't um, they state that they had found that like in a master plan from like 1967? Yeah. yeah. And it's you know. It took this long just to get it exactly so. to to real. So yeah. some of those things might be on those master plans for years yeah. before they're even you know finalizing. Right. Thank yeah. you for that, Brad. You bet. I think on that master plan, the majority of the <clears throat> projects have been taken care of. The only two that were left were the tennis courts and then the caretakers building. Yeah, and the, the tennis courts right now is in the process of uh, moving towards the grant process. They're getting everything finalized to get that submitted. And the caretaker uh, building, Brock did get new windows put in there, but he went ahead and boarded them up right away so the new windows didn't get broke out hours later. So we do have that boarded up right now, but again, that's still on the process of more funding through a grant to uh, hopefully revitalize that building. Thank you. You bet. Governing body comments.
I'll just make a, a comment. Uh, you spoke earlier about Paolo Baquez and an Eagle Scout project that was donated. Uh, per capita, the, the Shari Indian group has the highest number of Eagle Scouts in the United States, and Paolo Baquez was awarded her Eagle Scout. She's the first uh, female in the area to be awarded that Eagle Scout uh, badge. So as a community, I think we congratulate her. It's a, it's a big feat, so yeah. that's yeah. awesome. So, I just wanted to um, state um, some sincere thank you to all of the City of La Jolla employees who have really worked hard um, the past couple of months. Um, the police department um, has been very accessible and helpful um, regarding some issues around town and cleaning that up and letting people know that they're out and about and we're all watching and for the fire department for that fire and the streets department for having to clean all of that up and because that was a mess down it there. And, and for the water department putting in such long hours to making sure that our water is, is safe and clean for us. So thank you guys. Any other government body comments? Just a few things. Um, just, I, I, I talked to Joe um, and just the man the city manager search that's going on we're basically about six weeks into what we said would be a six-month process and I know there's probably a lot of questions well I know there's a lot of questions because people ask me you know what's what's going on with the process and um, mayor uh, did say at the beginning that we are finishing up there's a, a lengthy survey and then the next step is to get the brochure and then the job will be um, uh, advertised but I did I do just think it's important for us to reiterate that we are going to have public input um, as part of the process and that we are still looking at the six-month process um, starting back in February so um, I just I think that's important for us to all uh, remember um, also, uh, I welcome Erin. We're glad to have you here as our uh, city attorney. Um, and I, it, it, being new myself and sitting next to Brad, who's also new, and Erin's new, I, I just don't, um, I don't think we should waste the opportunity to maybe uh, be intentional as a council, having some conversations. And I'm glad to hear that we've got a town hall coming up later in April, but I just uh, would like all of us to maybe start thinking about how, what kind of processes we wanna change or implement or what we could do culture change wise. Uh, I think there's still a lot of questions about how do things get done in the city. And now that we have like a lot of, a lot of the cast has turned over, um, I just encourage us to think about how we are intentional about how we take city comments uh, what what happens in those city comments, what the role is of each of the people that are up here on the dais. Um, so it's just something I've been thinking a lot about. Joe and I had a good conversation about this afternoon and look forward to continuing those conversations. So um, on a much later note, I just want to announce that I will be hosting an Eclipse watch party. I don't know if you all are aware, but on August 12th, 2045, next time there's a uh, Eclipse in North America, La Hanta is uh, right in the middle of the path of totality. So something for us to look forward to in 21 years, as everyone is uh, hopefully excited about the eclipse that's happening on Monday, so a week I'll from be, today. Be You'll be retired by then? All right, well, I'll be having a party. I don't know if I'll be retired or not, but I'm having a party, so. At the Senior Center? Yeah, at the Senior <laughs> Center, right on, right on. August 12th, it's a Saturday, it'll be great, so. That's what I got. Yeah, and uh, like Maureen mentioned, she did talk to me today about uh, what does it look like when you become a council member? 
Like, you know, we all got this nice, stern talking to by Dean with love. You know, he meant well with it. But it's just basically like, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And it's from years and years of him having to fix when someone did this, did this, did this, did this. Um, but, you know, maybe there should be a, a better onboarding. When uh, Mrs. Harris came on, I, I called Don. And I'm like, Don, do we have any kind of onboarding? She's like, I haven't had to do a city attorney onboarding game ever. So, so uh, you know, there's just... We don't want you to go anywhere anytime soon, but if something were to happen, we'd like it to be a little bit of a smoother process, not just for Brad and for Aaron's positions, but for counsel. Like when you come on, uh, it shouldn't just be everything you shouldn't do. It should be like, okay, here's mm -hmm. here's your email. Here's um, here's if you didn't already know what you should know. Your here's your ward, and, and here's how you should handle a citizen that has something like this. And and just knowing that you know when they come up, we're only hearing one side of the story, and you don't always have to respond. And so there's. That's another reason why that crime town hall may just be an everything town hall. So we can mm -hmm. we can talk about crime, but then we can also talk about what our roles are as council mm -hmm. people and how you guys handle those roles on, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, you know, a lot of you have done well without it, but it doesn't hurt to, to just share that information with the public so they know more about uh, how you guys do your day-to-day -day stuff. Well, when I think back to uh, the session that we had on Sunshine Law and uh, the various components of it, it was in executive session, and I understand why it was, I think it was legit, but I think a lot of the same information uh, would be useful to be shared with everyone and be able to have a conversation about it, have a dialogue, why why we do the things we do, why we don't, um, we don't send emails, why we don't engage in social media posts as council members, that sort of thing. Like, I think it's just helpful for people to know that um, we are trying to do the city's business in the best way in the city's interest as well as citizens' interests. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to those We just had a uh, nice sunshine review with uh, Urban Renewal, and uh, they were like, well, we didn't know that. And I'm like, well, I had to deal with it a whole bunch of times. That's the only reason I know <laughs> it, you know, trial by fire. But if I, if I hadn't had to go through all that, I wouldn't have known either. Well, and, um, and like she was also saying about the city manager search we said six months but we don't know it could be eight months it's it you can't be really say yeah <laughs> you know, it could it be could three be, it could, um, but we really can't say at that time and then also in the involvement of people i think we expressed that we were going to do something similar to otero where they had their down to their two or whatever it was and then they would come in and have a forum where yes and no um so there there will be a couple different areas for them to be involved, for the community to be involved. And I involved. think they need to know. Um, and as soon as we get a little bit more information, we'll share all that out there for everybody. Okay. But yeah, there'll be a couple couple ways for them to get involved. Okay. Any other governing body comments? No? Well, sorry, wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't. There's a few things going on in Otero. Um, the Lunch and Learn on Wednesday, Katya from Croatia will be talking about uh, uh, what her experience has been like. Um, she's a um, sophomore. She's a player on the um, basketball team, and she's um, she's a lot of fun. I think it'll be a good lunch and learn. So 12:15 uh, in the learning commons. If you're interested, uh, Otero Arts Festival from tomorrow to Friday, open to the public in the Zuda Banquet Room. Come check it out. Um, Thursday the fourth, honoring Louis Armstrong, the community concert series, seven o'clock. I believe that is free, and uh, the Rattler Run is this Saturday, 5K, all the things. That's it, I'm done. Okay, uh, I would adjourn us normally, but I wanna see if Mrs. Harris would like to say anything on, on your first meeting. I just, yeah, I won't make you do it every time, but it's your first meeting, so I figured you might. I appreciate the invitation. I appreciate the chance to be here. I'm serious, I know I was quoting, I'm sure Mr. Malik was always serious as well, but it is a real honor to be able to serve it's a great group of people, and this is a great community that we live in. I'm really excited to be a part of it, and I'm excited to get to know each of you a little bit better. I spent today going around this actual literal municipal building, meeting people and learning more about what people do so that I can be more accessible, and also, of course, just so that I can understand how each part works together. But it was really exciting to be there today. It's a great it's a great feeling to be there and it's a, 
It's exciting to hear the projects that people are, are doing and taking pride in. That just feels really good. I'm just really, I had a great day. It's really nice to see it all. And you, I've watched these um, from afar for a long time, but having a chance to be in the building and be a part of things was really different than watching the Facebook comments that pile up. And it, I really appreciate the chance. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> With that, I will adjourn us. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Thanks. Thanks.